Today was the day that the leftovers of former Republican Senator John Ensign's political career got divvied up among a hungry Republican caucus left behind in the United States Senate. John Ensign's seat on the Finance Committee will now go to Senator Richard Burr of North Carolina. John Ensign's seat on the Budget Committee will go to Senator Kelly Ayotte of, North, uh, excuse me, of New Hampshire. John Ensign's seat on the Homeland Security Committee will go to Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas. And Mr. Ensign's seats on the Commerce, Energy and Aging Committees will go to his replacement in the Senate, Dean Heller of of Nevada. What was left of John Ensign's time in the United States Senate has now officially been picked over by all his former Republican colleagues. It is still sort of amazing to me that a sex and ethics scandal as salacious as John Ensign's did not get more national attention than it did. When John Ensign finally resigned just ahead of the Senate Ethics Committee, potentially expelling him from the Senate for this scandal, he even got lucky about that on his way out the door. John Ensign's farewell speech happened last Monday. It happened on a day when nothing made the news that was not related to Osama bin Laden's death. And John Ensign's goodbye speech would have made for some news had there been any oxygen left in the news cycle at all that day. In his farewell address, Mr. Ensign, for example, chose to reference his own unfortunate urges. I even tried not to become caught up in my own self-importance. Unfortunately, the urge to believe in it was stronger than the power to fight it. I don't think there's a right way to give that kind of speech, but I would suggest that saying the word urge in that speech, referencing your own urges when you're leaving the Senate for that particular reason, I don't know. Anyway, uh, one theory I have had about why John Ensign's sex scandal uh, did not get more national attention, even as it claimed the career of the former head of the Republican Senate Campaign Committee, uh, the guy who a lot of people said was on the road to the White House himself, even as it claimed that career, one theory I have had about why the Ensign scandal never got wider traction is because the John Ensign story did not help the Beltway media tell a larger story. It did not fit into a larger Beltway media narrative. Just talking about his hypocrisy, who he was stooping, how he paid off the person he was stooping, all the other sordid details, to the Beltway, that is apparently an unsatisfying story, unless it can be used to explain something more broadly about Republican politics, unless it could be used to explain some larger liability that might affect other politicians too. And this year, the Beltway media has decided that family values, sexual moralizing, social issues of all kind, those are just not relevant to Democratic versus Republican politics. When Indiana's Republican Governor Mitch Daniels told the Weekly Standard last June that the next president would have to declare a truce on social issues, quote, we're going to have to, we're going to just have to agree to get along for a little while until the economic issues are resolved. When Mitch Daniels said that, the Beltway media response was to coronate him as a serious candidate for the Republican presidential nomination. Why was that? Because that social issues truce line validated a narrative the Beltway was already really invested in. Because it is one that Republicans had been telling them to say. And it is that Republican politics this year are all about the Benjamins. Republican politics this year, all about fiscal conservatism. All of those old fashioned, divisive, fire and brimstone, crusader politics are behind the Republic Republicans. Y yes, the, the Democratic president may be charismatic and inspiring to naive idealists, but serious grown ups are looking to the Republican Party now for non divisive, just common sense issues. And that means the social stuff just can't be the priority anymore. Let's call a truce on the social issues, as Mitch Daniels said. Let's just focus on money. That is a very attractive line that the Republican Party has been wholesaling. And the Beltway media has very much bought it. And now the Beltway media is busy selling it retail for the country, to the country. They have been for months now. The problem is, is that this line, however attractive it is, it's not true. One of the ways you can tell it's not true is that all of the Republican presidential contenders so far, even the most unlikely ones, are crusa crusading really hard on social issues. The biggest political story in the news today is, of course, that former Republican House Speaker Newt Gingrich finally sort of officially announced his run for president this year. Because of Mr. Gingrich's own troubled personal history, he should probably be the candidate least capable of crusading on moral and sexual issues, right? 
But that is exactly what Newt Gingrich has been doing in the run-up to announcing this candidacy. Before this announced run for president, Mr. Gingrich chaired a group called Renewing American Leadership, a group he founded, he said, in order to, and I quote, bring moral leadership back to our nation. What sort of moral leadership is Newt Gingrich offering exactly? What sort of pressing moral issues are the ones that Newt Gingrich is qualified to be the crusader on? Well, I'm glad you asked. I think there is a gay and secular fascism in this country that wants to impose its will on the rest of us, is prepared to use uh, violence, to use harassment. Uh, I think it is prepared to use the government if it can get control of it. Uh, I think that it is a very dangerous threat to anybody who believes in traditional religion. Did you know there is a gay fascism in this country? Gay secular fascism plotting to use violence to take over the country, to make it a gay fascist country, so that we can destroy traditional religion. Duck? Hide? Arm yourself? Send Newt money? I don't know, but that's his contention. Earlier this year, Mr. Gingrich told a conservative talk radio host that the first thing he would do as president, the thing he would do on his very first day as president, Gingrich, would be to roll back abortion rights. That's what he says he would do on day one in office. That would be his first priority, abortion. As he toured the country promoting yet another new book recently, Mr. Gingrich teamed up for a public appearance with Reverend Lou Engel. Mr. Engel seen here praying over Newt Gingrich. If Lou Engel seems familiar, you may remember him from his calls for Christian martyrs to die to stop abortion in America. Days are coming when we're gonna have to risk our lives to stand for truth in this society. 600,000 men died on the battlefields of America, and if God required it for slavery, what will it mean if God requires it for America, for the bloodshed of 50 million babies? Mr. Gingrich is not the only Republican presidential contender to turn uh, toward the social conservatism the part of social conservatism that is that radical uh, and that bloodthirsty. Republican Congresswoman Michelle Bachman of Minnesota, for example, will, re will reportedly share the stage next month at a Tea Party nominating convention for president and vice president with an activist named Bradley Dean. If the name Bradley Dean is familiar to you from this show, it may be that you remember Bradley Dean, like Lou Engel, calling for an upping of the bloodshed in America's culture wars. Muslims are calling for the execution of homosexuals in America. This was just released yesterday, and it shows you that they themselves are upholding the laws that are even in the Bible, the Judeo-Christian God, but they seem to be more moral than even the American Christians do, because these people are livid about enforcing their laws. They know homosexuality is an abomination. If America won't enforce the laws, God will raise up a foreign enemy to do just that. That's what you're seeing today in America. Foreign enemies rising up against America because Christians aren't doing the job of killing the gays. Whether the Beltway will acknowledge it or not, this is what it's like to compete for the Republican presidential nomination this year in 2011. It's public appearances with guys like these. Candidates or potential candidates like Michelle Bachman, like Rick Santorum, like Mike Huckabee, those are the kinds of candidates who are front paging their social conservative views. And frankly, those are the kinds of candidates you would expect to do that. But what the Beltway has been missing is that it's not just the hilarity of Newt Gingrich trying to reinvent himself as a born again moral leader. It is not just the always running as a social conservative candidates like man on dog Rick Santorum or preacher turned politician Mike Huckabee. It is also the supposedly serious candidates, the ones who supposedly really reflect what mainstream Republican politics are all about right now. We need to be a country that turns toward God, not a country that turns away from God. We have people in Washington, D.C. who believe the unborn do not have a right to life. Yes, they do. We have people in Washington, D.C. who say marriage will be defined however we feel like defining it. No, it won't. It should be defined as between a man and a woman. 
you, but that the social issues that, uh, that this country uh, considers and that are very much in debate today are very important. Marriage must be defended. I think it's under attack. And I believe that being pro-life is a, a very important uh, feature of the American culture, and, and that's something I will continue to defend. Former Republican governors Tim Pawlenty and Mitt Romney, not thought of as great social issues crusaders, both pushing social issues. And then this week, Mr. Truce on social issues himself, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels, he ripped up that truce he wrote as well after months of praise from the Beltway for the supposed Mitch Daniels mantra of focusing on fiscal issues and forgetting about divisive social issues. This week, Governor Daniels signed a bill that is expected to make Indiana's budget deficit worse by millions of dollars per year. It will do so because it will ban all federal funding to, excuse me, ban all funding to Planned Parenthood clinics, whether or not they provide abortions. Mr. Fiscal Discipline embracing the abortion culture war at the expense of his own state's budget, as the move puts at jeopardy $4 million a year to his state in federal funds. The Associated Press helpfully noting today, quote, the law could improve Daniel's status among social conservatives as he considers running for president in 2012. Yeah, you think? There is no truce on social issues in Republican politics. This is as much an animating force in Republican politics as it has ever been. You can see it in the presidential candidates if you are willing to pay attention to what they're actually doing rather than what they say they're doing. And you can see it in the places where Republicans are in governing control, like in the states. This year, Republicans have introduced approximately 570 bills to restrict abortion rights in 48 states. Republicans in the states right now are implementing the most radical rollback of abortion rights in this country since Roe versus Wade. In the other place Republicans have governing control right now, the U.S. House of Representatives, Republicans there are pursuing three separate federal rollbacks of abortion rights, including one that would raise taxes in order to curtail abortion abortion rights. What the Beltway media says Republicans are doing is just focusing on issues like the budget, letting all of that abortion fighting go by the wayside. What Republicans are actually doing is raising taxes in order to curtail abortion rights. They're supposedly only focusing on taxes so they don't have to worry about stuff like abortion. What they're doing is raising taxes to go after abortion rights. In the states, they are making their budget deficits worse in order to go after abortion rights. Republicans sold the Beltway this line that there wasn't going to be any culture war this year. So the media apparently did not bother to hire any culture war correspondents. But this war is underway. You guys are late, but it's not too late to start covering it. Get to know the candidate's friend Lou Engel, for example. There's a place to start.